Hola, Royce. Man, we're off to a bad start. <laughs> I wanted to make you feel welcome. First off, I already know that this isn't a Scarface review because they don't ever speak Spanish to each other in the movie, which is weird. <laughs> yeah, a guy speaks Spanish to Tony, but Tony rarely speaks Spanish to anyone else. I'm Cuban. If I would have ever like spoken English to like my grandmother, she would have yeah. slapped me and go, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you... That to me... <sighs> yeah. Okay. Well, well, first off, first off. Let's do that. Sorry. I, I invited I'm you... I'm heated. So I invited you here today because... Um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but the internet tells me that you're not a nice person. You're a bad guy. Oh, name one person that said that. Well, uh, <laughs> everybody. Well, let's go to your comment section on oh, any platform. Oh, I don't read them. <laughs> <laughs> Refuse. So I think you might have been a little influenced by this film. I think it sets a bad example. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just want to go through the film and see where, where you went wrong. Because, you know, sure, sure. You know, as a uh, public health figure who writes for the New York Times, according you. to your bio, you should be yeah. a nicer person. Thank you for respecting my journey, first off. Yes, so that's yes, important. I do. I do. Uh, diversity is our strength. That's it the is. motto for hacking it is, movies. It is. Uh, yeah, so Scarface. Have you ever seen the original? No, I haven't. Yeah, uh, I mean, don't, I know of it. Don't. It's bad. Okay. Uh, produced by Howard Hughes and directed by Howard Hawks, I think. It paints a uh, poor light of the Italian people. It makes them look like criminals, and uh, it's uh, I know unrealistic. Unreal. I watched it. I, I turned it off. I was like, this is this isn't real. This isn't true. This should be a movie about a guy who has a perfectly fine face starting a legitimate olive oil business. <laughs> but yeah, so it's a remake of that film because that film was very popular. Uh, this is directed by Brian De Palma. You like De Palma? Oh, it sure is directed by Brian De Palma. Yeah. Oh, boy. It's very Brian De Palma. Uh, also written heavily by Brian De Palma. Uh, I thought it was written by Oliver Stone. Uh-huh, sure. Oh, is it one of those things? Yeah. Yeah, with the writing credit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Brian De Palma made one of my favorite films that's around here somewhere. Mission Impossible. Yes, the Mission Impossible reboot from the 90s. Oh, I love that movie. It's so good. It's so, I, first off, I could watch all the Mission Impossibles. I think they're all great. They're yes. trash. They're, look, I get it. They're Hollywood trash, but I will watch <laughs> every second of that, that that absolute crazy person, Tom Cruise. Yes. Uh, I keep saying. we. I reviewed the first one. Um, I, I think I have it up there. Mission Impossible 2. It might be my favorite, and it's the worst one. That's how much I love the Mission yeah, Impossible they're all they're franchise. All great. They're all great. You really can't go wrong. Can we talk about this black and white poster uh, for Scarface? Uh, it's been parodied a million times. You mean the t-shirt that every rapper had in the late 90s, early 2000s? Yes. Yeah, I'm aware of it. Yes, uh, and famously, I never got the shirt. I should get it. The Latino Heat Eddie Guerrero oh, shirt. So I want that. So good. So they made a made-for-TV remake of Carrie, and I mentioned this on the old show. It was when Stephen King was uh, green-lighting... Uh, Everything? Yes. He was green-lighting uh, movies uh, based off previous movies that he didn't like, so The Shining in the 90s, and then he did Carrie, and for some reason, they made the remake, and when they put it on video... They gave it a Scarface cover. Yeah, they did. I didn't know. Oh, wow. Why? What the f What correlation does Carrie have with fucking Scarface? The blood? Barely. I don't oh, know. they're they're very horrible to women in both of them. <laughs> yes. Yeah, all right. You, you got go. that. You got that. <laughs> <laughs> this movie is part of the uh, "You're Missing the Point by Idolizing Them" oh, franchise. Did you know anyone who was real into Scarface? I knew a lot of people. Well, remember something. Yeah. Like, I'm from Miami, so, like, I know a lot of Cuban people, right? Yeah. And, of course, even though you could clearly see that his Cuban accent is terrible. All I have in this world is my balls and my word, and I don't break them for no one. Do you understand? It is? We don't talk. <laughs> He's no Robert Lozier. Uh, yeah. Oh, we are they not Cuban? Are they Italians pretending to be Cuban? <laughs> also... Also, somebody else pretending to be Hispanic. Hector Salamanca's in it, too. What is Hector? Is he Italian he's, also? He, yeah, he's he's not Hispanic, but he's, yeah. He's in a, he always plays Hispanic. He looks like it, to be fair he with really him. Does. Yeah. He really does. Yeah. And in the early 2000s, this movie had, like, a kind of a second life. I guess it got put on, like, a VHS. It got put on DVD. And there was a ton of merchandise for Scarface, including a McFarlane action figure. Don't, don't you want a, a sad looking Al Pacino? Oh no. He, you know, he looks like he just missed his bus. <laughs> He's like, oh, oh no, that is great. Uh, this is one of the many things I inherited from my friend Joe. 
uh, on that famous day where he said, Tony, you want some Spawn toys? And I went, yeah. And then he gave me three boxes of McFarlane action figures. So I, I now like have, so I now have this. I also have all the rest of our dogs. I um, like McFarlane action figures normally, yeah. but this looks like it was made by Seth McFarlane making fun of it. <laughs> It does. A bunch of people had merchandise for Scarface, uh, and there were a lot of people who missed the point of the movie. Uh, and I knew this one guy, so I dated this girl for a bit, and we went to her sister's house, and the guy she lived with was obsessed with Scarface. And he, they, they were giving us the tour of their home, and we made it into their bedroom. Scarface blankets, Scarface posters, Scarface towels, Scarface pillows. Everything was Scarface. How old was the guy? I have to know. How old, how old was at that guy? point? It was probably it had to be a guy like in his early mid twenties, maybe. Oh my god! And he's like talking about like how much he loves the movie, and he's like, "Man, I want to be. That's like my dream to be like Tony Montana. He's my hero." And I, I forget if I said it out loud. Did he watch the end of the movie? Does he exactly. know how it ends? I forget if I said it out loud or if in my head I was like, "You know how that." movie ends right <laughs> he only watches the first three-fourths of scarface and then he stops at the end he doesn't want to ruin it yeah he just yeah. turns it off right yeah. there he's like i know how the movie ends everyone's happy <laughs> man in his house it, it, it's because being an house this is a, this, his house in that movie is so gaudy it it, it is ridiculously like the gold trim and the tigers and the, yeah is that not very cuban <sighs> They made us look like a bunch of buffoons. <laughs> they really make human people that make look like, hey, Al Pacino, I know you're watching this. <laughs> he watches every I episode. I know you're watching this. He watched our Godfather episode. He was a big yeah, fan of it. Yeah, he's a real big fan. <laughs> I don't think he watches any of his own stuff anymore. He's just... What's but, he in lately? Irishman was the last thing I could remember. Oh, yeah, I never watched that. Neither did I. Mm. I don't have four hours to sit there no. and see... I, I don't know. Look, Scorsese, I like Scorsese, obviously. Yeah. But Scorsese suffers from the same problem that Tarantino did is when you become so famous, every people your editors are afraid to tell you when to stop. Well, Tarantino's editor died a horrible death. And so. this, that's my point. And his new editor, since they didn't have that rapport, yeah. is just afraid to go, okay, look. Yeah, I liked uh, Hateful Eight, but that's one where I'm like, this could have been trimmed down a lot. If Hateful uh, Eight was a miniseries on HBO, which, which, they, which they did it on into Netflix, I did, that would have been better. But yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, so Scarface, when did you see this film first? It's a rite of passage because I'm Cuban. It is. It's like no, the Godfather and Rocky is, with is, Italians. It's, it's, and, and it is, but except you had actual Italians in your movie. Yeah. There's one Cuban person in that movie. Well, main guy. Yeah. And that's, uh, man, what's his face? I forget his name. From Breaking Bad. Uh, his his buddy. Um, the Hector Salamon? No. No, the other one. The the, the the one that was trying to date his sister. Oh, um, the, the character Manny Ray. Yeah, Manny. But yeah. I'm trying, what's the actor's name? Because that's I'm blanking on his name. It's, it's funny because Manny, so the guy playing Manny Ray, it's hilarious because I think it's it's so funny because think how things have gone full circle. So you have Al Pacino, an Italian guy, doing a terrible Cuban accent. And the real Cuban guy in the movie, to be fair, Manny is, is mm -hmm. very, very good Cuban accent. And now Manny is doing a terrible Cuban, a terrible Mexican accent on Breaking Bad. His Mac, and I know this is something that people that aren't Hispanic don't get, but like yeah. there's a huge difference. Let's say even in America, it's different from, from, from Boston or from California, yeah. their accent. It's the same thing like, yeah, that's not, not how Mexicans talk. And the same with this movie, like, that's, not how, that's not how Cubans talk. Um, we had that, uh, the girls on our show, uh, Trisha, she's like very Italian and whatnot, spent time in Italy. She was criticizing The Godfather. She's like, a couple of the people in this movie's Italian are is really bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's a right, it's funny because Italian's like, eventually you get sat down, you get shown The Godfather and Rocky. <laughs> so yeah. what, what do you get? You get Scarface and what else? What else do you have? Uh, Man, we don't have, you know, come to think about it, what do we have? We have... We have uh, that, and, and I mean, before that, not so much it's Ricky Ricardo, I guess, uh, but how many famous Cuban people do you know that have big movies? I mean, really, there's not a mm. lot. And he's not even Cuban. Again, I'm doing it to myself. <laughs> I have been fooled. This is MK Ultra stuff. <laughs> Cubans have been fooled. I'm doing it now, but you've been fooled to go, this is all we have. Do you understand the only representation, because <laughs> diversity is important as you brought up. Yes. The only representation that we have is Al Pacino with the worst, just the worst... <laughs> Cuban, none of us talk like, take it easy. Hey, take it easy. I was keeping count. They said take it easy 14 times in in that movie. By the way, so I, it's so funny because whenever I try to do uh, Al Pacino, I ended up doing Andrew Dice Clay's impersonation. Oh, of Al yeah. 
Uh, you know who did a good Scarface mm. impersonation? Uh, Paul Rudd in the Reno 911 movie. Oh, yeah, he but, did, and then, yeah. But then the twist at the end is he's not Cuban. No, <laughs> he's like he's, from Colorado. Dude, I, I mean, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's so. It's so, and I, I say this and I mean this, it is so bad. The yeah. accent's so bad. There's so many things wrong with that movie. Yeah. And I still love the movie. Yeah, it's it, a great it's, movie. It's really weird, like, how you could look at it and go, every scene has something wrong with it, but it's still such a good movie. Like, yeah. I, I from the beginning to the end, you know, the, the making it thing, and, you know, they made us all look like a bunch of boat criminals. Did you notice that in the beginning of the movie? Hey, look at all these boat oh, criminals. Oh, is that not accurate? I was going to ask about the authenticity. Once. Okay, look. <laughs> I'll be fair. Yes. Many criminals did come during that during that lift, but they made it seem like it was just all it was yeah. was just a deluge of murderers. It, it literally opens up. So the movie opens up with mm -hmm. Fidel Castro, and it's like Fidel Castro opened up the boats, and he sent people to be with their families in America. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, while he was at it, he was like, well, let's empty out the jails and just send a bunch of these people there, too. It, well, the truth is, it wasn't really actually, I mean, there was actual criminals, but really the people we were sending were more political prisoners. Which, which he is. Which, Tony Montana says he which is. Which he is, yeah. yeah. But So it wasn't like, oh, they were just, they're emptying the jails. And it was like, no, there's a lot of political, like what they did with the other one, the one, the, the, the guy that he killed at yeah, the beginning. Yeah, there's a guy that comes up, yeah. Yeah, that guy, and he's, you know, he's like, and, and by the way, thank you, movies. They don't do this anymore, yeah. and it really bothers me. I like when a movie lets me know that that's the bad guy, like the way he was dressing. I was like, oh, that's the rich, <laughs> that's the rich do-nothing do Cuban guy. We're taking him out right yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, <laughs> He's not wearing a Hawaiian shirt. He's the bad guy. Yeah, that guy, that guy, no, he comes of money. <laughs> I do like, I do like Tony's stance on the commies, though. Good for him. Good for <laughs> He's him. He's very anti-commie. He's very anti-commie, even though he kind of runs his business like a commie. He really which does. at the end of the day, he really, he's, he's Well, just, this whole movie, yeah, and we'll yeah. get into it, the whole movie is him just not taking anyone's advice yeah. and then being like, how did this happen? It's you're like, my well, junior partner. I'm like, oh, you, you're such an ass. <laughs> He's being questioned at the border, and he mentions that his dad was American. Mm -hmm. So maybe he's not even Cuban at all. He just grew up in Cuba. Oh, yeah. Well, no, because then his accent would still be better. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I think what happens with Pacino, I think the biggest issue that, the, the, that, that people have with Pacino is when you, when you talk about Al Pacino, people think of the exaggerated, with the way everyone does a Pacino impression yeah. now, right? They're, oh, hey, wah, all yeah. that. But Pacino, there was, look, before that, like the guy's a good actor. I yeah. don't think he gets enough credit for it, but he became a self parody of himself. And now it's like, dude, say the line, Bart. Yeah. He eventually, um, him and him and DiCaprio have that thing where they're like, they're pretty good actors, but a lot of times they resort to just screaming. Mm, God, it's like, all right, I get it. Okay. And DiCaprio's faces that he has to make all the time. Oh, he's like, all right. All right. Yeah, we go know. back you're to not, acting. You're not Jim Carrey. Relax. Yeah. Buddy. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so this is this is pretty funny. They ask him if he's gay or and dresses up as a woman. I'm like, I don't think those are mutually exclusive. Yeah, no. Well, <laughs> like it was the '80s. It was a different time. I guess they don't know. There but was then, a lot of cocaine. Like, but then they're like, uh, "How'd you cut your face? Eating pussy?" pussy and it's like, even uh, even Tony Montana is like, "I don't get that joke." Yeah, what is that? What, I don't get it. That's a weird brag. Like, first yeah. of all, you eating pussy? How? What were you doing? Did you yeah. have a knife? Anyway, his tattoo gives him away as a former prisoner, uh, and they send him to Freedom Town with his friend Manny. Hey, man, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to sound like a crazy conspiracy nut, but that town didn't look too free. I mean, they were shielded from the rain underneath the highway. <laughs> Convergence of overpasses they lived under yeah. Yeah. in a shanty town. Yes, yes. Uh, all dudes. Were there no female political prisoners? It was all dudes. I know. I was watching it. Yeah. Think they about the shanty separated? town. There's no. There's. There's no. No. I mean. I mean. I don't know. But at least in that, that was just. It was just. It was just dudes. Like mm. the, you know. Mm. I. I mean. I don't know. I mean, women definitely came on that boat lift too. It wasn't yeah. just men. Yeah. But maybe. Maybe you're right. Maybe they did separate them. Or they just assumed the men were the criminals and left them. Yeah. There. And they threw the Cuban women like a restaurant to work in Miami somewhere. They still. They still do this in Miami. Yeah, going? yeah, no, we still, yeah, we still have, we still have oh, these man, Freedom that's... Town, yeah, Oof. yeah, Oof. yeah. It's not great. Well, now Freedom Town has been converted to a place where people that can't be a hundred, a hundred, a hundred feet from a school have to live. Cuties Fan Town. That's Cuties, what we call yes, them. We call yeah. them Cuties Fan. <laughs> it plays, it plays on a projector, twenty four hours a day, and all you hear is. Da -dum. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, it's coming on again. There's one guy that's just like, we watch like <laughs> some Arches the New Black or something. Like, no, it's cuties again. Anyway, um, there's get, one thing I don't share: my money and my Netflix <laughs> password. 
Manny strikes up a deal. <laughs> Manny really is the instigator for everything. But can I say I love Manny? I yeah. mean, he's just he's a, he's he's a shitster. Yeah, one hundred percent. A lot of problems are because Manny can't help himself. Yeah. But man, Manny is funny. Like Manny gets me. Yeah. Manny's obsession with women, like I mean, it's like, even in, in they bring it up in the movie. They go like, "You don't care about money. You care about women." Yeah. And it's like, but he does. You yeah, know? he does. Um, yeah. But he basically says, "Hey, like, hey, we're gonna get a green card." This guy, Frank Lopez. Any relation? Oh my god, what a basic name. First off, Frank. <laughs> A, cu can I, a Cuban guy named Frank? Maybe it was Francesco when he went by Frank. Uh, yeah, no, maybe it's Robert Lozier. <laughs> Robert Lozier from Over the Top, <laughs> starring Sylvester Stallone. R, as in Robert Lozier. <laughs> oh, oh, as in, oh, oh my, my God. God. <laughs> that is a family guy joke. Um, yeah, so he's like, hey, uh, if we kill this uh, former general, uh, we get green cards. And uh, Tony Montana's like, I'm going to cut him up real good. Uh, he's excited to do it. Yeah. So they, do they stage the riot or do they just get lucky and there was a riot happening? I feel like there was just riots every day anyway. Oh, okay. So, you know, I feel like that was just Well, normal. the opening text, mm -hmm. the, the, the text is in and out of this film. They feel the need to, like, give you the, the beginning text. And then they give you a paragraph here. And then the rest of the film is just locations. It's like, yeah, and, oh, the, and the, text is, the rest of the text for such like this action crime boss movie. The beginning of the text is like I'm watching a silent movie. It's like, yeah. like, all right. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, there's a riot happening. And this is like this is their chance. And they like stab the shit out of the guy. Uh, what are they? They're what are they chanting to him? Oh, they uh, uh, lib liberta, liberta, liberta. So what they're saying is freedom. They're saying freedom. Oh. We want freedom. We want freedom. We want freedom. Okay. Mm -hmm. While stabbing the shit out of him. But hey, everyone works. has a different kind of freedom. Okay. Let's take a second. Yes. Res respect my journey. Yeah, right? <laughs> I respect your. Thank journey. you. Yes, and I, I, this is a very educational film for me. I didn't know that the Cubans had it. So the the Italians, they just came in open arms. They got businesses yeah. and they became good. They upstairs. weren't Irish. Well, I'm also Irish. So. Oh no, I'm so sorry. You know, there are, you're, you're a daywalker. Yeah, <laughs> there are people, uh, and my co-host Johanna is not helping. They're trying to spread this lie that I am not Italian. Oh, I've seen that, and I believe it. Yeah, it started on Reddit, uh, mm. and it's just caught on. Now my comment section, mm. they think I'm lying about being Italian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his real name is Tony O'Shea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more Italian than I am Irish. Anyway, so they end up working in like a food stand across from a really nice nightclub and they're admiring the rich people. Food looked good, can I say? That was a good looking Cuban food. That guy was bitching about the sandwich and uh, what you call it? Yeah. Manny was like, just eat the goddamn sandwich. Eat the sandwich. sandwich. Uh, but yes, they get a they get an opportunity from F. Murray Abraham. And I was like, that's F. Murray Abraham. <laughs> it was. From 13 Ghosts. I was like, I know him. He offers them a job for like 500 bucks, and Tony Montana is an expert negotiator. Uh, if you ever want to learn how- As you how can tell, that way he killed a general. You can tell it's a negotiator <laughs> written all over him. If you want to learn how to be a negotiator from Tony Montana, basically someone comes up to you with a proposition, like, hey, I'm willing to pay this. And you go, fuck you, you're fucking stupid. I hate you, you son of a bitch. You should be paying me $1,000. Fuck you. And the guy in Epper Abraham's like, Okay, uh, well, I got another job for you. <laughs> I like the cut of his jib. <laughs> I like the cut of his jib. I also love, so everyone on this in this movie is on cocaine. And um, I think like in the script and also the people that made it were on cocaine. Yes, I'm, yeah. I'm sure at the same time this yeah. was all happening. I, I don't think that was like, that was like set cocaine. You know, like the yeah. set, I think, I mean, I swear. It was probably <laughs> real. Especially what's her face. Like she was like, oh yeah, she, I think she's really on yeah. cocaine. Uh, I think the only character that might not be on cocaine is uh, Tony Montana's mom. No, um, oh, yeah, no, no. But even then, there maybe there's a deleted scene. Maybe a scene little bit, yeah. <laughs> By the way, over. you could still yell at him and take the money. Yeah. $1,000 oh, is yeah, a yeah. lot of money. I yeah. take that. But yeah, so they offer him a job. They're like, hey, uh, we're going to buy this uh, Coke from this guy. Come back with it. We'll pay you five, five grand for it. So they show up, and it's a Colombian guy, and Tony Montana does not like the Colombian. Wow, like... I mean, like, it was really aggressively hated them. I was like, yeah, hey, man, you know, geez, relax. I mean, it's not as offensive as something he does later in the movie, but. Uh, what thing? He does a lot of us in the things well, later. Well, he, he, he goes after another group that I, oh, I take issue with. Oh, all of a sudden, when they're in New York, you got a problem. Uh, yeah, you know, it's just. I anyway, get it. Let's, get I back, get it. let's get back to this. Uh, so he's going after the Colombians. He, he goes to have a deal with them. 
in a, in a hotel room. And I remember watching this as a kid, like not knowing oh, what was going to happen. Uh, so it turns out it's like they're set up. Mm. Uh, and like fucking the chainsaw comes out and I go, oh God. And I, I, it's been a while since I watched this and I love how the camera comes out of the hotel to show you what Manny's doing. And at first it's like, oh, they're going to like, I mean, they do kind of shy away from the bio. So like, oh, he's probably going to hear the chainsaw sound and go in. It's like, nope, the camera goes right back into the hotel. And you see, you see like Tony's like forced. Yeah. Watch. When it, when they had the gun right in. Yeah. yeah that was, and that they was... just chainsaw his friend up. Uh, and I think, did you watch Tiger King? Of course. The one, one of the guys who owns Tigers, he said like he was in a, like a similar position. Like he was using that scene yeah. because he went to jail. He's like, yeah, so I had to do jail time. Cause like, what am I going to do? Like, no, sir. I didn't have the chainsaw. I was just in the room. Like it's not a good defense. <laughs> it's like, well, you see your honor. I was just holding a guy. Look, I bought the gasoline for the chainsaw, yeah. but I wasn't holding it. I thought he had a tree to chop down. I did not under, if I had known your honor. Look, I'm, I'm a simple lawn care guy. I don't know how I got caught up in all this. I did think it was odd. I was doing lawn care inside a hotel room. Mm -hmm. That part was a little bizarre to me, your honor. But the customer's always right. That's By what the way, they say. The Columbia guy, he is married to this chainsaw because like, so Tony's boys come in to yeah. save him too late to save the one guy. I don't know where they put the body because then they put in the bathtub. So he's like standing. <laughs> yeah. So they're standing on like his corpse, I assume. Mm -hmm. uh, that could have been wackier. Like they're falling down. Whoa. Like, <laughs> and they're slipping in the blood. <laughs> so they come in. It's like a big firefight. And the guy, he never lets go of the chainsaw. He goes to grab the money and he's still got the chainsaw. Then he uses the chainsaw to open a door and he jumps over the railing, still holding the chainsaw. He it's like, really dude. really loved it. Dude. Let the chainsaw go. You think it was attached like he was Ash, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, buddy? Tony, the master uh, technician? Tactician? Tactician. Tactician. And negotiator. And negotiator. Yeah. You need someone assassinated quietly. Tony's your guy. Shoot them in the face in the front of a million goddamn eyewitnesses, including one white guy with like the shortest shorts yeah. ever. <laughs> that guy was very distracting. It was the 80s. That you know what that is funny. There was a in the eighties. You could have a movie where someone's wearing really short shorts and it just glosses over you. You put that in a movie now. It's like what's up with that guy in the background? <laughs> Butts weren't invented in the film until like the mid nineties. <laughs> if you look at any movie before the nineties, guys and girls both. We were talking no about butts. that with uh, Alien at the end with Sigourney Weaver. It's like that they're showing scene. her butt crack, and I'm like, oh yeah, in the seventies, they're like, look at that butt, and it's like, oh, okay. And you're like, what? But I know <laughs> that was that was like, oh, what a sex symbol. I watch it, they go, okay, I, I guess. I'm like the rest, yes. It's just the part you're making yeah. me focus on is not the best part. I with her ill-fitting <laughs> tidy whities <laughs> yeah. uh, uh. He impresses Frank, Frank Lopez. He gets to meet him, Robert Loja, doing his best uh, Cuban accent. I mean. Look, I respect his act. They were both bad. I respect his more because he wasn't even trying. Like, yeah. he really was. Like, there was a slight little He's bit. Like, hey, I'm Frank Lopez. Hey. <laughs> Get me some rice and beans. <laughs> All right, Robert. Hasta manana. <laughs> <laughs> Say stuff like that. <laughs> he basically, like, is taking Tony under his wing, and Tony lays eyes on Elvira, Michelle Pfeiffer. Yes. And he falls in love with her right away. Uh, and this is when he's giving him lessons about the business. He's like, look at that guy, that greedy guy over there. You got to like fly straight and stay under the radar and uh, never underestimate the other guy's greed. Yeah. You hear that? You hear, hear that? You hear that? Cocaine dealers? Yes. You have to fly straight and yes. play by the rules. The cocaine dealers. Don't underestimate the other guy's greed. This might shock you, yeah. but other cocaine dealers also want money. And they will. Look, if you can't trust a cocaine dealer. Who can you trust? Who can you trust? You really? can you. What a world. Uh, and then uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, who's telling this lesson based off experience, uh, she's like, never get high off your own supply. And Robert Loge was like, yeah, yeah, I know. He's like looking at her as she's like doing coke. And then Biggie made a whole song about it. <laughs> he did. <laughs> the early 2000s, man. Yeah. Not, or, late 90s or 2000s. Like, just like you said, I think when it was, I think it's really coincided when it was re-released on DVD. Yeah. How many rappers? Like a lot of rap songs. Like okay. yeah, that, remember that song with Lil Kim? Money, power, respect. That's the key to yeah. life. I'm like, oh, that's Scarface. Fucking uh, Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Yes, is basically Scarface if it starred uh, Michael Madsen or something. Yeah. or no Ray Liotta if it starred Ray Liotta. It's probably more Cuban than Al Pacino. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, but Tony's loving his new life. He's loving this. This is what he wants. He wants money. I mean, and did everything. you see his suits? Of course he is. Yes. Uh, and he even dances with Elvira. Not a big fan of his dancing. And I know. That's how you know he's not Cuban. I know Al Pacino can dance. Have you seen the film Cruising? Oh, yes. I, one of my favorite songs in the world, uh, Scat Bros. No. Uh, did that. Uh, the, 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 uh, when they were in the, uh, in the club, yeah. Oh, that's a banger. That song's a banger, and I don't mean that as a joke. It is yeah. a banger. Yeah, and cruising. It's a shame. He's, like, doing, he's doing the, and he's so sweaty. Yes, he's so sweaty. And you can tell the first, he's just like, yeah. "Nah, this isn't me." And then he's like, ah, I'm, "I'm here. I gotta get into it." Uh, look <laughs> Ooh, up. I uh, like this song. Look <laughs> up Al Pacino dancing and cruising. It's pretty awesome. Yes, he thinks uh, Elvira's into him because the eyes. The eyes, Chico. They never lie. Uh, and All then, these little scenes that he's has, it's just, it's so. Everything he, he says is very quotable because the next scene is him being like, They sound like a great big pussy just waiting to get fucked on. <laughs> and I can't not hear this now without thinking of. Um, Oh, uh, what's his name? Michael Bolton singing. Yes. On Saturday Night Live. Oh, yes. Oh, the Jack Sparrow song. Yeah. Uh, yes. So if you ever saw it on Saturday Night Live, they did a thing where like Michael Bolton is singing a song, but he keeps singing about Jack Sparrow because he just watched the movies, and then he just starts singing about other movies, and suddenly he's Tony yes. Montana, and he sings this line. He's like, "Just wait and do the bit." Okay, I'm reloaded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I love when Manny tries to teach Tony how to pick up chicks. Now, as a Cuban, is this how you pick up chicks in America? They are know, so uh, aggressive. The, and look, Cubans are very aggressive. I, I can't defend us for that because we are. <laughs> but that was like over the top. Like if you watch that movie, like if at first you don't succeed, literally bother the girl until she marries you, I guess. <laughs> yeah. No, but that he's like, yeah, you got to go up to girls. You go, oh. <laughs> like even Tony's like, please stop doing that. He's gonna stick his tongue out. Oh yeah, he gets the kids. Yeah. Like, hey kids, watch Boy, this. And he's, he's so he goes, he goes out. up to the girl. And goes, uh, and he gets slapped, and it's like, yeah, what the fuck did you? I don't think that would work on anyone. <laughs> You didn't even ask her out to dinner. Yeah. Like, hey, ma'am, can I take you out to dinner? You're so pretty. Like, oh, 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 oh. And it's like, I don't do that. The last guy I did it with, I gave a scar under his eye. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. Royce, I am currently single. I should not be doing this, right? Uh, but talking to Cuban women, no, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> no I no offense. Using, I, meant, I meant using the tongue move. I probably shouldn't do that, right? Uh, I don't think it'll work out. You for can't me. do that in the States, but you can probably do that in Cuba. <laughs> you know, five bucks, you'll be great. Is Cuba accepting uh, uh, tourists? Can I go to Cuba? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and the, the, the tourism <laughs> is a very specific kind of tourism. <laughs> So anyway, he's, he's on Expedia right now booking a trip. Yeah, I'm Expedia. How much is it to Cuba? Oh, I got to fly through the Bahamas. That's fine. Okay, that's fine. I love the Bahamas. Yeah, I'll stop by. Um, so Tony has a plan. You're going to get the money, then the power, then the woman, and then a tiger. That is also part the of tiger, plan. the tiger. The It's a four point plan. It's a four point plan. Like yeah. He went into the meeting. He's like money, power, woman, tiger. So like, the tiger was implied because he mentioned it earlier. So the tiger was implied. Yes, yes. Uh, because he has a car full of tiger skin and stuff. He's very, I thought there would be more with the tiger. Do you think the tiger was just too hard to work with? And they're like, we're only going to have one scene with the tiger. I guarantee you that most stuff was cut because the, the way they talked about it, they did make it seem like the tiger was going to be a big part of the story. And yeah. he wasn't. Yeah. And he wasn't. It's just so gaudy. It's 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 that that like. You know that that weird like thug like what you know what I, you know what'll make me look good yeah you know what I don't have enough large cats I need <laughs> large cats to really know that I've made it yeah I don't know why it's like these these things seem like they're a nightmare to a tiger's with. great till you're cleaning tiger shit all day yeah yeah they're... yeah um, I knew a bunch of uh, gentlemen when I lived in uh, North Philly who all owned horses that was like their flex. They just had oh, that's secret, a money thing. They had secret horse stables, and I gotta watch it. They made a Neil Selva movie about like the urban cowboys of Philly, and I looked at the trailer, and I'm like, I knew a lot of these guys, and uh, they were into some shady business. I don't know if this movie. So is that what the show Luther was about? With these. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm by just, the way, yeah. I tell you the tiger thing. It's funny because that, that there's a lot of the stuff in this movie that's silly and ridiculous, but in Miami, that's a real thing. Like even to today, like you'll see news articles. Yeah. All the time where people be like, a man was attacked by a tiger. I'm like, how in Miami? Yeah. But then there's a, Miami's a lot of, 
Ford is cool. It's awesome because we don't have a lot of rules, but there can be a lot of downsides well, to that. You see, Royce, again, mm -hmm. Florida is bad and it's wrong. And because of this movie, it got you glorifying breaking rules. So I, how many tigers do you have, Tony? Checkmate. I, just, I look in the mirror because oh. I am a tiger. <laughs> <laughs> I can hate you. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I, mm -hmm. I'm hoping by the end of this, you move out of Florida. No. Maybe maybe New York, L.A., place where you'll learn good stuff. None of you come here. <laughs> Do not come to Florida. Do you hear me? We have tight. Look, you know what? I, should, I shouldn't be saying it's a lie. I should keep people out. Yeah, everything in Scarface <laughs> is true, okay? <laughs> There's a freedom town with a bunch of Cubans running around, <laughs> and they're just going to womanize you, and you might get attacked by a tiger. Don't go. Robert look, Lozier's there, too. Don't. Look, look, and you might think it's just uh, centered in Miami, but as the, the film Miami Connection shows us, the cocaine ninjas will travel to Orlando and also do crime there. So the entire Miami Connection was filmed in Orlando. I yeah. mean, right by where I live. And I'm like, then don't call it that because Orlando Connection wouldn't have been a fun name. No, no, no. Well, well because it was connected because they were the ninjas from Miami. And Such they a good band. Stupid cocaine. Good band, though. It was a great band. We have the so oh, where the vinyl go. We have the vinyl somewhere. Oh, nice. Uh, the drag. I also have a Dragon Sound shirt. <laughs> um, yeah, inspired so by Scarface, Miami Connection. Yes, I like to think they're in the same universe. Obviously, they're in the same. That's like that's like the what the what the what, what like in Star Trek what the lower decks is doing. That yeah. was like what the lower level drug dealers were doing. I want like an interquel. Like the movie jumps ahead sometimes. I want like an interquel where Tony Montana had to deal with the cocaine ninjas from Miami. <laughs> that would. Be Yo, man, what's what's up? You got this band causing shit for you? You fucking ninjas, like something like that. They're making sequels anyway. Yeah. Let's do it. We need the Miami Connection Scarface. <laughs> Look, if they could if they could bring Neo back after being dead for 50 years, you could bring a Tony Montana yes. back, no problem. Well, that's what the video game did. We'll talk about that later. Oh, that, <laughs> I remember that. Oh, I haven't thought about that game in forever. Yeah, uh, but he, like you said about uh, Cubans being uh, forceful, he tries to forcibly make out with Michelle Pfeiffer. I'm starting to think he's not a very good guy. <laughs> you know what? I'm picking that up. He's kind of a womanizer, and it's, it's funny because... The funniest part about that is that it eventually works. Like that to me is like it really does. It but worked. Look, well, look. Word of advice. Mm -hmm. I, I look. Uh, despite what Hollywood wants you to think, you I'm know what like, I call it? Holly weird. Yeah, I came that's up what with I that. Uh, I, I'm an Italian man, and I've only been on the right side of the law, despite what Hollywood tries to tell you. But it's a good advice. Um, the uh, the main uh, crime boss. Maybe don't try to sleep with his wife. Maybe stay away from that. I, that's what I would. Ballsy, by the way, because there was even a point, that part where he's with her by the pool, and he's like, he could be back any minute. He's like, I don't care. And I'm like, all yes. right. Yes, that's that's two things you got to learn. In Godfather, don't slap the mob boss's daughter around, although in the book, Don Corleone doesn't care. Uh, and and don't try to sleep with the mob boss's wife. You know, just just avoid that. Yeah. That's all I want you guys to do. But to be fair, let, let's be honest, man. Frank was a terrible. He was. He, like, the moment I saw him, I was like, oh, yeah, this guy's a pushover. And I get it. It's 80s Michelle Pfeiffer, and who wouldn't? Oh. But it's it's pretty smart. <laughs> just st stay away from crime bosses and their significant others and their family. Like, don't try to do anything with them. Can I point out how funny it is that yeah. even that he got the girl of his dreams, that's all he wanted, like, within <laughs> within a year, he's like, get out of here, you loser. Yeah, he's because he's never, Beat it. he's never satisfied. Mm -hmm. I think we needed to know a little bit more about Tony. Like, why is he never satisfied? Mm -hmm. Like, what exactly happened in his past that, like, got him here? And who polluted her womb? They never get into that. They never get I into that. I want a spinoff. They never get into that. I want to know that. what happened. But like I said, we're jumping ahead a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, he finally visits his mother and sister, who are living in America. Yes. Three months later. Uh, and his sister, who he's really into. Now, Thank you. Now, Awkwardly. Look, I don't want to criticize your people, but... Uh, we're not into incest. You're not? Okay. We're okay. not from Alabama. Relax. <laughs> no. He is, is very it? protective. But he, but there is a point where you're like, is he going to kiss her? Like, what's going no, on? No, no, no. He's, it's not protective. He's straight up in love with his yeah. sister. I guess because that's the one that he really can't have. Yeah, yeah. That's his tiger. Yes. That's his white tiger. <laughs> it's like he's doing all this stuff. He's like, I can't have my sister, but I can have Michelle Pfeiffer and the tiger. And it's like, but at the end of the day, it's you want sister. your sister because yeah. you're a fucking weirdo. Yeah. It was a very weird relationship. It wasn't yeah. just protective. It was like, 
don't talk to anybody, don't see anybody, don't go nowhere, you don't do nothing. I'm like, yeah. By the way, his accent is so bad, I can't even do a bad, that bad of a Cuban <laughs> accent. I'm Cuban. I grew up my whole life. I can't even do that. And you couldn't remake Scarface in any way because the new South Florida accent isn't that. It's like literally, bro. Like, dude, uh, they are remaking it. The Coen Brothers are writing it. What, what ethnicity? I like the, the Coen Brothers, though. I love the Coen Brothers. Uh, well, they, they've been writing it for a while. The Wait, last, who's playing Tony Montana? I don't know. The last, well, it might not be. So the last update I saw was in 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, but it might be, they might do what this movie did and just create a new ethnicity, a new character. Have some balls. Stuff. William Defoe. <laughs> Willem. <Do> Willem. <laughs> Oh, are they going to do oh. Irish Scarface? Yeah, do that. <laughs> I'd watch that. What other Scarface? Oh, you can do like uh, Japanese Scarface, do like Yakuza stuff. Samoan Scarface. Samoan Scarface. The Rock. The Rock is Samoan Scarface. You know who's Manny? Roman Reigns. <laughs> Dude, listen to me, Coen Brothers. I am available. I will happily write this movie for you. You have the Usos play younger versions <laughs> of them, even though they're kind of all around the same age. <laughs> <laughs> They just look younger. Yeah. <laughs> they're living in they're living in a shanty town in Hawaii. <laughs> it's Freedom Town, brother. Oh, I know it's probably going to be Russian Scarface. Yeah. That'll be the most. No, no, no. Because again, they they make. He's obviously not a good guy, but he's yeah. the hero. It'll be the he. he so you couldn't. Well, well, but, but that's the thing. Like Italians were the bad guys in the 30s. I don't know why we were just. We're just trying to be, get people to relax. But why'd you guys? It's your fault for making it look cool. That's yeah. the problem with all this mob <laughs> stuff. Like you know, yeah. It's it's like you make it look awesome. You know, yes. Like telling people like screw you, I'm gonna do whatever I want. Yes, and, and I get that. Get that's a, a rebellious attitude. People get a little carried away with the first half, and they stop paying attention to the second half. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like with American History X. I knew a lot of racists that were into American History X. I know, and, and it's like, did I don't you think watch you, the second half? Yeah, of the I'm like, movie? I don't think you learned the lesson that the movie was trying to teach. And how much of that is the movie's fault, and they're just the people watching? That reminds me of the Scarface when he goes, "You know what the scar means? Not welcome." <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> Yes, uh, but Tony's mom is not having any of that shit. No, the, to be fair, yeah. she is the most, out of a movie filled with just scumbags, yeah. she is the most sincere, Yeah, the most 100% stuck to her principles. She's like, I don't want your dirty money. Yeah. Beat it, you know? I'm guessing something happened with Tony's dad. He might have got caught up in stuff, and she sees a lot of his mm -hmm. dad in him. Because she's just, like, anti-Tony right away. They haven't talked in five years, and she's, like, pissed when she sees him. I'm like, uh-oh. Something she happened. She won't even let him date his sister. <laughs> yeah. All what right, kind of, mom. What kind of a mother. Uh, but, yeah, he throws the money at her. She doesn't accept it. But in the car, man, he's like, wow, your sister's beautiful. And Tony's like, no! She's beautiful. How come you... Hey! Stay away from her. Don't, don't you stay don't away you look from at my sister. And look, to look. be fair, Manny would be like Bleh, to his sister, so I get <laughs> yeah. it. I mean, I get yeah. it. And look, 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 I've told um, a lot of my friends, like, hey, don't you ever date my sister. And I followed up with, I'm like, because I'm concerned for your well-being. And like, <laughs> she, you could probably do better. <laughs> you could do better, buddy. I said, I said that to my brother-in-law when he texted me, <laughs> yeah. uh, like, two years ago. And he's like, hey, I'm going to ask your sister to marry me. I, like, text him back. I'm like, you sure this is a good idea? There's a lot of other people out there. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty of fish in the sea. Yeah, like, I don't know. There's man. plenty of tigers in the jungle. I'm like, you seem like a nice guy. You sure? <laughs> <laughs> so they do business with a guy who uh, makes Coke in Bolivia, but he needs yes. people to distribute it. Uh, Sosa, I think is his name. Sosa. Yeah, my notes just say Coke guy. Uh, but he's there with Hector Salamanca. Yes. Uh, and they're having a negotiation with F. Murray Abraham. And uh, again, Tony, master negotiator, mm -hmm. basically just undermining F. Murray in Abraham. Of, and by the way, he was doing that in front of Frank's other right hand man, who at the time he didn't know was a snitch. You know, you yes. Know, see, I'm like, what do you do? Like, that's how it's like that movie. You're like, I will say that it makes like the whole Tony rebellion thing against Frank not that yeah. impressive because Frank is a dude like, I'll beat this guy up. I'm not worried about Frank. He's a loser. Yeah. You know, yeah. Frank's always, always making threats, but he never does anything. Yeah, that's true. You know, he, I, always, he tries when it's way too late. And at one point, Tony literally tells him like early in the relationship, fuck you, Frank. I'm like, yeah, 
Can you imagine telling Don Corleone, fuck, you'd be dead immediately. They'd kill you right away. <laughs> yeah, and I don't even know why Frank sent him out there with F. Murray Abraham, because, like, he's just, he's, like, making a deal where it's going to cost them more money. He says they're going to make more, but it's, like, very risky and shit. And, uh, well, he, go, he, he says it's to watch his back. He's like, you're out here to watch my back. And I'm like, what is one Cuban dude going to yeah. do to look at an entire... The, the guy's connected with, like, the military. Like, you see yes. you, you, later on, you see it. He's connected. Yeah. Like... And actually, that scene, so they they call him away, Hector Salamanca, mm -hmm. who I'm sure has a name. Uh, I he, call him Hector. He gives him the phone, uh, and he like, gets a call, and he's like, hey, uh, F. Murray Abraham, uh, who also probably has a name. Mm -hmm. He's like, we're going to put you on a helicopter and a jet. You're going to go tell Frank You'll be there the in deal. five hours. Yes, and he uh, F. Murray Abraham's like, good. And then uh, Sosa's just like... So a guy on a phone called, uh, he's an informant for the police. He got this family put behind bars and, uh, oh, here are my binoculars. And they shied away from the chainsaw. They do not shy away from this. They throw no, that fucker throw out right of the now. helicopter and like hang them horribly. And I do, I do, I do like Tony's like, I don't care. I never liked them. Yeah, Tony's just I like, don't ever like them. Yeah. Tony's like, huh. All right. Yeah, that's, that's fucked. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of my Then he goes to 30 minutes. You got any leads on tigers? <laughs> Because I heard you get them down here. <laughs> so yeah, Kokai's like, I think I could do uh, business with you. Uh, we should be pretty good. He goes back to Lopez. Lopez is not happy. No. He's and like, I'm Robert Loja. Why would you do that? <laughs> and still doesn't do anything yes. about it. Yes. And then he accepts it. He goes, you, I believe it was a $14 million deal, something like that. Yeah. You, know, you, 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 $14 million deal. I was like, don't worry, y'all. If you need any money, I'll get some on the streets. First off. Like five million, you get millions of dollars. You're yeah. just gonna go rustle it up. And he's like, "What about like uh, the brothers? Who I don't think we ever see." No. He's like, "What about uh, these people that'll come after us?" He's like, "I'm gonna bury those cockroaches." I bury those cockroaches. Do you say cockroaches? I every Cuban does now because of that movie. What? Well, it's what cockroach. They? It's cockroach. <laughs> Not cockroach. Who, what, what do you think happened with Al Pacino? Do you think they were like, like the executive was like, my my uh my. Mm -hmm. Son's friend is Cuban. It was just some like guy just yeah. making shit. It's up. just not silly enough. Or the guy was just like trying to sabotage Al Pacino. It's like, oh yeah, we all say cockroaches. Make sure to say hey, cockroaches. Watch, he's gonna say cockroach. Watch, he's gonna say it. Gonna, I got him to say it on a. I got him to say it on a movie. Yeah. Oh yeah, we all say uh, take it easy. That's yeah. what we all say. It, it, why do you keep saying that? And Al Pacino's like, take a easy. Take okay, a cockroach. Not take it. Take a easy. Take a easy. Take a easy. <laughs> Yeah, so he's like, I'm gonna just kill all our competition, and like Lopez is like, God damn it, God damn it. Uh, but the next day, like you said, uh, he tries to cuck Lopez again, again by hanging out with Michelle Pfeiffer. He's like, By the way, I want to marry you and uh, mm -hmm. have kids with you. And she's like, I am dating a mob boss. Can you leave me alone? I'm glad he's in a traditional marriage. He didn't even sleep with her first. He goes, I want to marry you first. I'm yeah. gonna make an honest coke addict out of you. He might be a virgin, technically. He might be, yeah. We don't know his backstory. He could very well be a virgin. Ever since he tried and he got the scar, <laughs> he's never gone back to it. He ate pussy and he, he learned the hard way. <laughs> they all have teeth down there. I didn't know that. They're not like that in Cuba. <laughs> oh, man. Now I want to watch the movie Teeth again. Oh, that's a great movie. That movie is so, so good. good. It doesn't get talked about it's enough. It's so good. And people only talk about the premise. I mean, that is like a very clever, dark comedy, that yeah. entire film. But anyway, we're, we can talk about vaginas with teeth all, all day. All day. Let's get back to Scarface. It's a bumper sticker on my car. <laughs> so Tony sees his sister at the club, and he's like full with like jealous rage. Again, yeah. like it's his wife. Again, he does yeah. it again. And, and meanwhile, like, like the dirty cop is interrogating him. And he's like, hey, look, you got to do business with me. And he's the whole time. He's just like. Fucking, uh, my sister better not be dating that guy. And then Frank shows up and he's like, Tony, what are you doing? I'm giving you orders. And the whole time he's like, I'm just really worried about my sister. I hope she doesn't sleep with that guy. <laughs> he doesn't I'm say like, that. You just put together a very dangerous $14 million coke yeah. deal. The cops are on and you have to pay them off. And you're worried about her, about, about your sister maybe making out with a guy in a yeah. bathroom. I'm like... There's bigger things to worry about. And then he cock blocks his sister. I know. He like runs into that bathroom and he like beats the shit out of the guy and like throws him out. And the sister's like, what are you doing? What's going on here? To be fair though, now we there is some criticism that needs to be flung at his sister just for a little bit. Yeah. She immediately goes, he's a nice guy. I like him. To then go into Manny like literally like 30 minutes later, like, why don't you date me? I'm like, what happened to the other guy yeah, you were just talking to? Yeah, what about the nice to? guy 
that you yeah. liked. Yeah. And to give Manny credit, because he is a coos hound the entire movie. Yeah. But to give him credit on that scene, he seems like, no, no, no. no, he, no. He, he tried. He really did. He, he got like, another girl in I between know. scenes. I know. And He's he like, has no, their at no, her house. No, not you. No. no. Smart. It is. Smart. No, he, of course. Don't date friend sisters. I did it once. and Did it now turn out well? No, oh. no. I, again, it was the same position. My my friend like felt bad for me because it was a fucking nightmare. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I'm like, oh, that's why you did what we did her. I thought you were just overprotective, but it turns out you're just warning. You're saving me. me. <laughs> you're like you were just warning me. Like, I should have <laughs> taken your warning. So Tony gets drunk at a club while Richard Belzer does stand up. Oh my god, that stand up set. He does his impressions. You think it was the real people? Because yeah. he's doing impressions. Yeah. Up there. And by the way, look, I know everyone does cocaine, Richard, but all the jokes, did you notice all the jokes were cocaine jokes? Every joke he did. Wow. In Every Scarface? Joke. But <laughs> I'm like, dude, I get it. Do you have any other jokes? Like, yeah. oh, you'll feel better after you do a gram. I'm like, all right, yeah, cocaine, one cocaine joke. And he kept going. I'm yeah. like, all right. Richard Belzer was just the warm up for the real, the real comedy act. Guy in fat suit with rubber mask going like this. From Venezuela, they said, too, or something. Yes. Yeah. Like fatty Arbuckle. I don't know what that was about. Oh, okay. That's not like a Florida thing or a Cuban thing. No, we don't. We don't just have guys doing this. Well, now you are. If I need <laughs> that comedian saves Al Pacino because these two guys go to assassinate him, and that comedian. Gets I know all the he took all the bullets. He's a bullet. Sponge. God, I miss practical effects. Yeah, I really yeah. do. Uh, but Tony kills them. Mm -hmm. Tony's very versatile. He, for a guy who fucks up constantly. He always gets away. Well, almost always. Yeah. Uh, he even shoots like the lights or they shoot the lights, I think, to clear I out think the it's room. Him. Yeah. So they actually end up killing themselves, which is yeah. pretty funny. But yeah, he goes to exact revenge on Frank. And Frank's a pussy. He begs for his life. Get, Jesus. Get him! No! <laughs> I'll give you $10 million and I'll disappear. I'll give you $10 million. You can have Elvira. <laughs> can we talk about Frank's office or room or whatever? It's so tropical. And look, yes. I love me some tropical. But I yes. mean, the whole thing, the it, whole thing looks like a screensaver. It looks him. like uh, Dr. Jacoby's office on Twin Peaks. <laughs> oh, yeah, it does. Thing? Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah. So he's like begging for his life and then Manny shoots him. And then the cop is like, ha, what a hell of a thing. Anyway, so we're going to do business, right? And then he gets shot. He gets shot, like, oh, What the hell? It's like... <laughs> I love when Robert Lowe's just like, can you help me? And he's like, nah, it's your problem, buddy. <laughs> Have and fun. it was so funny because that cop, like the whole scene when, when Tony's talking about, oh, I'm going to pay, oh, you know, oh, how much, oh, what about what if the, first off, can I say Tony Montana? Look, it's just some points where like, he would expect the local cop when he was telling him, like, what about the FBI? What about the, what about the DEA? And he's like, look, man, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm a local cop. I can't control <laughs> what the DEA is doing, you know? <laughs> I can only do so much. Yeah, I'm like, sorry. What do you want from me? We ATF. I'm like, what do you want? Uh, but yeah, he uh, he tells Val Elvira that he's taking her because she's property, I guess. Uh, and he sees the blimp, the Pan Am blimp that's mm. saying the world is yours. Yeah, he's like, man, I really like that catchphrase. God, that became. That I became, like that a catchphrase. That world, the world is yours thing, just became like every every like yep. sp every uh, airbrush shirt in the nineties. <laughs> With the world is yours, with like a tiger with a crown on it or something. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Scarface is a great movie, but what yes. came out of Scarface was just horrible. Yes. Montage to push it to the limit. Push Dude. it to the limit. Rocky gets a lot of love for montages. Yeah. I would put this toe to toe with any Rocky montage. It's a good montage. The music is great, first off. Yes. Walk along the razor's edge. I'm like, oh man, I'm hyped. The living. That, but look, see, it's happening. We said he's a bad guy, but we're falling for it because he did a really good job making him look cool. Yes. Cool hit. montage, cool car. He gets hot chicks. Like, I mean, yeah, he opens up a business for him and his sister. Yeah. He gets married. He gets his tiger. The tiger does not look thrilled. He to be likes there. his boys or girls. Remember that? See what he's Oh, yeah. Throw the man on me. Uh, yeah, the tiger looks really pissed, and I yeah. bet you they were like, all right, we're just doing... Because okay. later on in the movie, you hear the tiger, but you never see it again. They're like, all right, cut I think out we're everything done with, with this the, tiger. This tiger's rough to deal with. I don't think we're going to find a nicer tiger Let, to work with. Let's go return it to the Miami Metro Zoo where we found yeah. it. <laughs> he starts making too much money, and it gets hard to launder the money. With the bank, and the, and the banker's like, oh, yeah, with 10% for 20s, and yeah. you know, he starts breaking it down, and... And I like Tony again, his, 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 yeah. for the guy who's supposed to be the street smart guy, he doesn't understand. It's like, 
there aren't they look, I'm not on the banker's side here, but they are undertaking a huge risk. And it's yes. like, by the way, 10% I get. And Tony was that's the thing you figure out about Tony is other one doing is like, look, I know being careful about your money, but he's like, he he nickels and dimes everything. Like when they're, when they're counting the stream yeah. out there, when they're counting the money, he's like, Oh, it's it's fifteen hundred dollars short. It's like like ten million dollars. Like, yeah. like it's, it's who cares? At but that that's, point, that's who cares? how they that's how yeah. they steal from you. If you yeah. let it slide long enough. Yeah. I don't know why I'm giving you advice. I'm trying to turn you around and be a better Before person. Before <laughs> you know it, you're tiger food. <laughs> yes, yes. But yeah, they're just like, hey, look, uh, the IRS is on it. But I like how unaware Tony is, and I think that's why he's watching TV later on. Because he's just like, have you not been paid? The IRS is cracking down on Southern Florida, the New York Times. New York, there was a, yeah, there was a yeah. Time Magazine article, yeah, yeah. 60 Minutes, like everyone's talking. It's literally yeah. on the news. He, there's even a point where he's watching the news, and he's just, yeah. all he cares about is is like, I know, really want to talk about that news yeah. section when we get to it. Oh, it's so good, yeah. So Manny's just like, hey, look, I know this Jewish guy that can help us, and yeah. he'll be a better 4%. Bank. Yes, and then he men he mentions Italians, and Tony uses the G word against my people, and uh, and shame on Al Pacino. You know, you played Michael Corleone, and you are Italian. You should have said, I will not say this line in this scene. They said the S slur for my people like 50 times. Royce, we're talking about me here. Oh, you're right. Um, I'm sorry. I apologize. Look, look, his character's Cuban, so he's allowed to. <laughs> oh, yeah, just just like just like Robert Downey Jr. in Tropic Thunder. Yeah. <laughs> that stuff aged real well. So many people miss the point of Tropic Thunder. Oh, the whole point of it was that the guy was just a try hard. Yeah. Just you but, know. but but also, mm. and this is an example, Hollywood had a habit of hiring white guys to play minority. Like that's what the movie people are like, I can't believe you did it. It's like, no, the movie's making fun of Hollywood for doing that legitimately. That is one of the Tropic Thunder is, a, is another movie yeah. where you have to go into it. You have you have to, the context is so important. Yeah. It is a parody yeah. of Hollywood. In the same way people, a lot of people give Last Action Hero a lot of crap. Last Action yeah. Hero was an amazing movie. Yeah. If you go into going, oh, this is a parody of action movies, it's a great movie. Yeah, but there's yeah. Hollywood does it all the time. Like, what was it? There was that World Trade Center movie with Nicolas Cage, and mm -hmm. they made a guy who I think was either black mm -hmm. or Hispanic in real life. They made him white, and they had to apologize for it. There's an old movie with John Wayne playing Genghis Khan. Uh, oh, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of examples of this, and that's what Tropic Thunder was making fun of, mm -hmm. and then people are yelling at the movie for it. It's like, no, Tropic Thunder's on your side. They're Mickey, saying Mickey this is Rooney. Wrong. Yes, they're saying this is wrong. That's yeah. the whole point of that character. <laughs> oh, God, but people just look at the picture, and they don't yeah, to watch the movie. Yeah, it doesn't matter. He gets paranoid. He's watching TV. Part uh, of the cocaine. Yes, his marriage is not going well because of the cocaine. Who uh, would have thought a marriage just started off with her saying no, no, several, several times to him and him murdering yeah. her current boyfriend wouldn't turn out well. It's weird to me. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? You know, they seem perfect for each other. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in a way, they are kind of perfect for each other. Uh, awful That's people true. tend to unite. Yeah, go together. It's like, yeah, yeah, you know what? You guys love this. As much as you complain, you kind of want this constantly. Their banter was, vi I will say, I did catch that. I've seen a bunch of times, but I was really paying attention. Like Their banter is is very sexual in nature yeah because it seemed like for, like foreplay because that's how the relationship started yeah. it seemed like foreplay for them you know like yeah. oh you know you suck oh yeah you know you're not good in bed oh blah 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 blah, blah. and then when she leaves he goes i love you i says only joking <laughs> oh, i can't even do his bad impression i sound like a, an italian guy when i'm doing it do you understand how bad because he is an italian guy and that's what he sounds like he's like an italian guy doing a bad cuban accent <laughs> Italians are great actors, okay. Yeah, no, they're wonderful. <laughs> Have you ever been to Cuba? No, and I won't go. Why how do, go how do you know they don't talk like that there? Maybe his accent's so good that you find it alienating. What like like Leonardo DiCaprio in Blood Diamond. Apparently his accent is... People shit on his accent, but apparently his accent's like super authentic. It just kind of sounds funny. What part of Cuba is he from? Long Island? Like, that, see, that's the He's thing. He's from Havana? The only one I can. Oh name. my god! No, but you're right though. The movie, the movie is just like they did no background. I mean, hey, he honestly, did research. He he was in Cuba for Godfather Two. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sure. What? That's why. That's, that's where he picked up the accent. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> Tony, uh, you've, Al, you've only been here ten minutes. I got the accent down. I got it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> So yeah, there's a guy on TV and he's like, we have this big drug problem and it's causing all this crime. And then the guy on TV is like, people say if we just legalize and tax it, that'll stop people from being criminals. I disagree. And it's like, you guys deserve the war on drugs. You, that was your solution right there, you asshole. That will say, that's a really good call, man. Because if, And don't get me wrong. I know the government would fuck it up yeah, and make it all course. shitty. 
But it's like, if you want to stop crime in the streets, you kind of caused it. Yeah. You, if you, you had the solution. Yeah, it, it, is, it, is, it is actually really, really yeah. funny going back and seeing the things that were so important. Because I love these time capsule movies. They're yeah. so great. It's like, war on drugs and Cubans are the biggest threat to this country. And yeah. I'm like, they keep trying to sell this illegal thing that's not as dangerous as alcohol. And we yeah. keep shooting them and they keep shooting us back. It's weird. It's like, well, we need another $10 billion. Yeah, it's, <laughs> like, it's like, hey, you remember when you guys uh, made alcohol illegal and then it caused the mafia by some group of people? I don't know what people were involved with that, but that's not important. Uh, and, then, and then you made alcohol legal again. Why did why did you not learn that lesson for this thing? Well, how else would Nookie Thompson have made money? <laughs> Think about that. I know he's Irish and yeah. you don't like him, yeah. but that's why that's how you made money. But it's like it's like we we learned that lesson. It's like oh, when we take it away, they get really angry. They get really mad. And then the, for everything else, it's, it's almost not like they're addicted. <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. Oh, this didn't end well. I wonder why. What should we do? Uh, I don't know. Throw them in jail and shoot yeah, them. Yeah. I don't think that's gonna. I don't think it's gonna fix the problem. I feel like that's just gonna cause more problems. Look, hear me out. What if we just give them all tigers? <laughs> I kind of feel like they calm down if they had tigers. <laughs> There's this one. What's his name? Yeah. T Montana guy who's <laughs> really into tigers. <laughs> It's like his whole thing. He loves tigers, yet he skins them for his car seats. Yeah, I, I love, don't know. I love a guy in Tiger King that was like, you know, people complain that they're endangered, so obviously you got to make more. And it's like, yeah, asshole, but they're supposed to be in the wild. Like they're not yeah, supposed, none of the back out of your trailer park. They're not park. supposed to be in a farmland. Yeah, exactly. like, like, what the fuck, you asshole? Anyway. <laughs> not in a chicken coop. Yeah. <laughs> Intermission. 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 Two tapes. I did watch this on VHS. Um, you really? You, oh, you watch it on the VHS? Oh, that's awesome. Royce, I have a lot of tape. No, I know, I get it, but I th I still think like I, I even if I had it on a VHS, I'd still like find it streaming. No, if it's not streaming for free, I will watch the VHS tape. I will say, I'll give you this: there's something about the sound of a VHS tape going on a VCR that you cannot <laughs> replicate, and you kids will never understand. Yeah, the and don't get me wrong, clunk. Yeah, I'm not super nostalgic. The video quality is terrible, but uh, especially when you have you ever, well, you're, I'm sure you've. Do you watch it on an, a new widescreen TV, though? Because that's how say, you really tell I've how bad it is. I've mentioned many times. Right before this show and yeah. everything like took off, I bought a nice, like, 50-something, 57, 60-inch HD, like, 4K TV. Mm -hmm. And Too I have... Too much VHSs. And ironically, since I started this show, I've watched a shit ton of VHS tapes on it. Okay, man. I bought. I finally got a PS5. You know what I've used it for? To watch YouTube. <laughs> I have this six hundred dollar thing sitting there just because I wanted it, and I'm not even playing games. I'm like, oh, just watch a YouTube video. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I'm just like, oh yeah, yeah uh, Scarface. I couldn't find it streaming like four dollars. I'm like, well, I got two copies yeah. of it, and I got a VCR. <laughs> Let's pop that baby in. <laughs> that is true. Finding it streaming because when I was watching, I was like, let me find it streaming, and the only place that had it Amazon for like four bucks. And I'm like, I am not going to. So I found that other means of finding it, but yeah. it, it, it's, you know, at this point it's sold. It shouldn't count. I think yeah. when a movie's around for so long, you shouldn't even get in trouble for it anymore. You Who really cares? Um, but yeah. So back to that, uh, you mentioned the scene where he's counting the money and that's when it, the movie picks up again. My favorite, this, this scene, I've been waiting for this scene. It's one of my favorite scenes, not just in this movie, but in movie history. Uh, I'll let you get to the part, and then I'll tell you the part that I love. You, you, okay, you okay. Because there's a part I specifically love. I'll just say what happens. In the yes, yes, do that, okay. do that. So he's counting the money with his accountants, and he's trying to figure out how to launder it. He's putting it through his businesses and whatnot, and they're counting all the way into the early morning. Nice little zoom up on the clock. Uh, and yeah, as soon as he figures out like the last bit of details, the accountants with like on a dime just go like, freeze! Get him up. Get your hands up. Put your hands against the wall. Turn around. I'm not kidding. So they were cops the entire time. Now, what was your part that you wanted to mention? This genius businessman, this guy who's made it from rags to riches, mm -hmm. looked at the most, uh, he was all night looking at the clock because they show him looking at it. He knows how long he was there. Yeah. And he didn't see a camera like this size. Yeah. On the, on the, that's his fault. Yeah. He is the dumbest guy I've ever seen become successful. Like, I was looking at that, and when we're talking about, like, if, if you would have had this in here, I'd be like, why do you have a camera? In that? Immediately, <laughs> the first thing I'd be like, is there a camera in that clock over yeah. there? Why? You could have hit, like, in the 80s, there were so many big fucking equipment. You could have hit the camera somewhere else. How about this? And hear me out. Yeah. A mirror. 
Yeah. Through a mirror. Then you put it behind. There's so many other ways. Just he anything. deserved to be caught. That scene right there, for all the people, Tony Montana's so cool. He's a moron. Yeah. Like, he did a lot of dumb things. He got lucky. Like you said, the thing goes against his boss. Yeah. Take, goes in his girlfriend. T talks for his boss with a, with a mob. He, everything he does, you know, and, and you're like, he, it, it was, it was, how? <laughs> I, I this has bothered me, bothered me for years. I'm sure a bunch of people have thought about how do you sit there <laughs> and look at that damn clock and go, Yep, everything's normal in this room. Let's keep counting our illegal money. And obviously, by the way, that's the other thing. The, the, the accountants who were cops were telegraphing it the whole way. Yeah. Where do you want me to put your illegal money, Tony, <laughs> that you got? It's like, it's like half baked. Yeah. We would like to buy some cocaine. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? Uh, he gets out on $5 million bail. Was that the number? Yeah, cartoonish he, number, yes. by the way. Uh, Even if everything he did, what they have him on is trumped up tax charges, really, yeah. right? Because everything else, like he was right when he goes, you can't prove anything else. Yeah. So even $5 million, any 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 defense attorney would be like, that's ridiculous, Your Honor. Yeah. For tax evasion, he's yeah. not a threat. Uh, but then his lawyer tells him, like, hey, uh, I'm going to get you out of conspiracy. You're going to have to do some jail time for your taxes. So like five, but you could do three. Maybe if it better, I could cut you a deal. Yeah. And he and Tony keeps thinking, again, this is the guy a lot of you idolize. He yeah. goes, if I give you more money. And the attorney had to explain to him that he was five years old. He goes, it's not about the money, amount yeah. of money you give me, yeah. Tony. It's like there, there are people in charge. Yeah. Like, like, like there's, there there's is only a legal so system. much I can do. There is a legal system. And then Tony's like, yeah, but the government's evil too. And the guy's like, yeah, but like yeah. They're, they're the ones in charge here. I can't really like, unfortunately, they make the rules and the rules are against you right and now. And it turns out in the next scene when he goes back to Bolivia, we were wrong. And of course... He knows a dude in Washington that could make it all go away. Yeah, Sosa knows a guy. He's like, hey, look. Uh, yeah, his his name was Representative McGuffin. I <laughs> if I remember correctly, his name. But he's like, hey, listen, um, we're going to get you out of jail time, uh, but our operation is at risk because of this asshole. Mm -hmm. And he puts the news on, and this guy's like, you'll never believe what they're doing in Bolivia, John. But look at this picture of this general here. And look at this guy. He makes all the cocaine. I'm going to go on several other news shows and let you all know about this. And what was that guy doing? Like, I know that's a good point. He's like, I work on my government and it's so bad. And, and you know, and, he's, and that's when they mentioned he's going to be on 60 Minutes next. And they're yeah. going to be talking about, I'm like, oh, they're going to kill you, right? Like, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. Uh, maybe he thought he was safe in America. <sighs> but uh, New America? Hector Salamanca is apparently this amazing hitman. Uh, and they're like, you need to send, you need to go with him in America because he can't speak English. Uh huh. Okay. When see, it turns out the, char what, the character who plays Hector Salamanca can't speak Spanish. It's the reality yes, of it. But seeing like what his plan was, I'm like, you probably could have gotten someone in America to do this, to be honest. I don't know if you needed. I know you trust him, but. No, I know you do. But like, right. The, the, see, the whole plan was just because he didn't speak English. The other two people in the back of the car spoke English. Like, it just seemed a lot of that seemed forced just to, to put him in a certain place at a certain yeah. time. And it was yeah. kind of like it, that line where it was like this whole big, oh, the, the government. And then the, that's the part where yeah. they, they contradict it, where the lawyer's like, I can't do anything. It's a legal scene. And all it took was like, I have friends in Washington. Tony didn't even go, can you please explain further? What does that mean? <laughs> what do you mean friends in Washington? Instead, he's like, okay, you need me to go to New York and kill somebody? Yeah, you got I it. Flew out to Bolivia, which he was just allowed to do. I feel like he wouldn't. That's have the other thing. Five yeah. million dollars. He's out. Yeah. And they didn't take away his passports and be yeah. like, well, you can't go to Bolivia. You can't run. Yeah. That yeah. that would have been a phone call. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Tony, he like, hates his life and his wife, uh, and he's airing out his grievances publicly. Well, you know the what restaurant. they say: shitty wife, shitty life. So yeah, he's like causing a big scene in the restaurant, and she leaves him. And uh, what you got? Manny's there, right? And he's just—it's like, not even the scene. It's not even like he just yelled at her. At one point, he tried to grab her head. He just grab her head. He was like trying to grab her head. I love he's just sitting there like yeah. that. He's like, "Is this all it is? The 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 money, the, the fucking the sucking." And they're like, "Dude, we're trying to have a nice meal. Yeah, Can you, sir. you not?" Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he yells at her because I guess I'm leaving, Tony. Yeah, and he doesn't care because who does he really want? His, the his, tiger. It, no, his sister. Oh, his sister. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> so say good night to the bad guy. Go on. He ends up going to New York to kill the guy from the news. 
Uh, but someone fucked up or something went wrong because they say his family always takes a separate car. But mm-hmm. this day, the bomb's already there. And mm-hmm. on this particular morning, he's there with his family. I know. And Tony is, suddenly has morals for this one thing. Thank you. That of ever, and, and I know what the people are going to say. Well, they try to set it up earlier with one line. Where it's like, I like kids. Yeah. And I'm like, I get it. But like out of everything that he's done from the beginning of that movie, that was super out of character. There was never a scene where he goes, I won't hurt kids or I won't yeah. do that. It was just all of a sudden he's like, I have morals, you know. It is true. He is just killing kind of just assholes. Yeah. He's no, not really killing nice No, people. that's a good point. He's not just, you're right. That's a, compared to other people that are just kill. He, yeah. if you look at that, it's working. It's, it's you, you just, I just caught it again. Yeah. We're romanticizing. It's like, well, he's not that bad. He's oh, killing right. bad God guys. Yeah, but we're doing he's it. He's killing <laughs> bad guys. He's a murderer. Yeah. So the whole time, Hector's got his hand on the button. He's going to blow it up with the kids. And like, Tony keeps telling him, like, you're not doing it. You're not doing that. I, I know. You better not want to do that. Can, can we, before we get to the next, can we talk about that detonator? That yeah. like that that's <laughs> that I miss eighties technology. Yeah. That sleek, just like sheet metal box he had yeah. with like those switches. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that thing was awesome. Oh, you ever see that movie uh, Kill the Irishman? No. Oh man, there's a bunch of car bombs in that movie. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, obviously in the name I figured. Yes, yes. yes. Uh that movie's good. It's got Ray Stevenson. Oh, okay. Uh, and the director of the Thomas Jane Punisher. So you got the one Punisher actor and the director and Christopher Walken's in it. It's a good movie. Thomas Jane Punisher is a good Punisher, by the way. People don't give it enough credit. It's, it's a better revenge film than I guess it is a Punisher movie. But yeah, I thought it was fun. Did you see the one shot blood, blood Money? Yeah. That was great. That was cool. Yeah. Although I do like Warzone, other than Looney Bin. Warzone's Jim. good too. Looney Bin Jim kind of yeah. sucks. And then you find out that that guy in real life is a weird weirdo. And mm-hmm. it's like, it doesn't really help. Well, him. he's in a Punisher movie. Yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he is a real fun yeah. guy. He's, yeah. Look up that dude. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, so Tony's had enough, and he shoots Hector in the face. Like, and right I love head. I love every time Tony does something like this. It always cuts to one of his henchmen being like, oh, right? Like they see it all the time. You're right. It's it's always like <sighs> they're like, do I have a resume? Can I, uh, Tony? My mom is mm-hmm. sick. I gotta go. And he's like, your mom died ten years ago. She's sick again. I gotta yeah, go. I gotta go. <laughs> it was my stepmom. Yeah, who I actually care about more. I gotta leave. I'm also, sorry. I'd like to find out more what happened with the body in the car that you shot in the middle of New York City. Yes. Yeah, Tony's not the man. Also, the so. bullet went through his head, but not didn't break the window. He had a, he had a thick skull, I guess. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. uh, I will that say- That is how he ended up in the wheelchair and breaking bed. He you're survived. Right. You're right. He survived. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. ding. <laughs> Uh, and he's always dinging because th- that was where you wanted to pull the pull the switch on the box. It's blow. all connected. He's trying to blow up a family <laughs> bing, in front of. Bing, by the way, bing. can we talk about their plan? <laughs> yeah, they were trying. Broad daylight. Broad daylight. They were going to blow him up in front of the United Nations. Look, not only which, by the way, is even in the eighties, is surrounded by security. Yes, that's not an area. Maybe that's they were just... trying to blow him up before, but still, if the guy's on his way to the United mm-hmm. Nations, he gets blown up. People are coming down on you hard. Anyway, what's this whole what's this whole secretive bomb stuff? We've already seen Tony shoot somebody in front of a bunch of people. Do it with this guy. <laughs> Honestly, then his kids would have been fine. You just go shoot yeah. the guy in the head, wearing a ski mask, and yeah. leave. Yeah. I don't know what this what this whole thing was. They're bringing bombs to New York. Yeah, it seemed like a terrible. Pl- I mean, I, I, the only thing I can think of is maybe they were trying to send a message. Yeah, I think that's so. the only. I think maybe they were trying to. They wanted to make it look extravagant. You know how bad it was, but yeah. But all the joke doesn't their business rely on them being like low level? So make, yeah. make, make it look like a mugging or something. Don't don't do the fucking explosion near the United Nations. You're gonna get a lot of eyes on you. By the way, if your bill if if if, if your business wants to be low level, maybe don't be working with like the government and the yeah. military and a guy <laughs> in Washington and in between Tony finds out Manny is missing and also Gina is missing and Elvira's missing. He's not too concerned about that last one. No, he didn't care. Uh the tiger's still there. Uh, Thank God. The Sosa is pissed. Yeah, yeah, he was. He's like, they wanted me to kill kids. He's like, you dumb motherfucker. He told his speech at the United Nations. There's no reason to kill him now. We're already fucked. And he's like, I told you not to fuck me, Tony. And I love he hangs up and Tony's yelling at the speaker box. Yeah, you know, it's funny because you could, you could tell the movie's dated because in the 80s speeches to the United Nations used to work. <laughs> they don't anymore. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, shut up, loser. <laughs> You're right. Uh, the 1983, I think a year later, Superman goes to the United Nations, mm-hmm. tells them to get rid of their nukes, and they're like, sure. And they just do. 
Tony's mom meets up with him and she begs him to I'm find I'm so Gina. glad to see her again. Yeah, she's like, she's like, Tony, please, Gina, she went to some guy's house, this nice rich mm-hmm. house. You gotta you gotta get her out of there. She's doing bad stuff because of you, Tony. Tony, let me let me help you out, Tony. If you're looking for her, uh, check out Manny's face. I'm sure that's where you'll find her. <laughs> <laughs> So I yeah. tried to tell her no, but she wouldn't stop, Tony. So Tony gets the address. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I assume Manny got a new place because he doesn't go he doesn't, like, that's yeah. Manny's house. Wait a second. I yeah. was just there. So he goes there. He sees Manny with Gina. He doesn't take it well. That bummed me. Yeah. Out of all the deaths in the movie, and there's a lot, that one bummed me because... Look, I know Man- like Manny's all this stuff, but Manny was sure. I think he did legitimately like a sister, yeah. and he was just no one defended Tony more than Manny. Yeah, no one went to bat for him more than him. Yeah, that, that bummed me out. Like that's where the the I guess you would call him an antihero. That's where it yeah. becomes irredeemable. Now yeah. you're like, all right, come and on, then, Manny. And then I feel bad for Gina. She's like, we got married yesterday. We were gonna surprise you. I mean, Manny should have been smart enough to right, right. surprise one and have been a good one. And again, like I said. Henchmen come in going, oh, God damn it, Tony, we got to go. We got to go. <laughs> this is bad. This is bad. We got to get out of here. <laughs> and then and then the, the henchman's like, I don't mean to be a dick, but can I get back the wedding gift I gave you guys? <laughs> because if you're not going to use it. <laughs> uh, Tony, we tried to invite you, but you were in New York trying to kill somebody in front of the UN. <laughs> Sorry, we didn't think to send you a, a save the date. Yeah, we didn't think you'd be able to show up for the wedding, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. Uh, so Tony spends all this money on security and all the cameras, and he's staring at a mountain of cocaine. And in, meanwhile, on the cameras, you just see all of Sosa's men just flooding the compound. The fa- the one of the, the, of course, the, one of the most famous scenes in the movie. Yeah, yeah. him just like facing the coke. Yeah. And one of his henchmen being like, hey, boss, uh, your sister's going to be fine. Whatever he takes a head on the butt. The guy's like, <laughs> "You have something." Yeah, right yeah. Here. You just have something right here. Just yeah, more point yeah. out. Uh, but yeah, so so's the bad. other thing. Can I say real quick? Because yeah. I know people bring this up. It was kind of weird because the other thing about Tony, Tony did do coke in the movie sporadically, yeah. but even it bothered him how much his wife was doing when he was like, "You do too much of that shit." Yeah. And then at the end of the movie, the last one's like, "I love cocaine so much." Well, he's not taking anyone's advice. He's yeah. kind of failed upwards. God, he, you're right. <laughs> yeah. he, everything he does, except for this last thing, yeah. everything he does, got him a house, got him the yeah. tiger, got him the money. The only other movie I think of where someone fails upward is uh, the remake of Bad Lieutenant with Nicolas Cage. Oh, that's a great movie. Where he's just fucking up constantly. And, and then I love, I, I talked about it on the old show. I love that series of coincidences where that one afternoon, everything works out well for him. Like his book, he's like, you did really, really great. Yeah. He's like, hey, we got the guy. And he's just like, cool. And then he gets promoted and he's still on drugs. It, I know, dude. He's like, I didn't know how I was going to get out of that one. There was <laughs> absolutely no redemption arc in that movie no, at he's just, all he's an awful human being and he just makes his way up i feel bad for the one henchman that goes up on the balcony and he's hiding because then gina comes in and she's like do you want me tony do you want to fuck me isn't this what you want so she was aware of his pervert stuff of course yeah she should have been a little bit more concerned uh but she's trying to kill him so like that henchman is sitting there just listening to this weird incest stuff he's like oh this is awkward it would like, have been funny they, if that scene just ended when he goes, I can't take it anymore. He just shoots himself. <laughs> the just he's, shoots just himself. Like, he's just like, ah, it's going to be really weird if I had to kill a guy fucking his sister. I hope yeah. they don't actually end up fucking. And then, and then when she starts shooting him, he's like, oh, thank God. Oh, they <laughs> and, he goes, oh, and he boy. just lights her up. Yeah. <laughs> God, I miss practical effects. I know I said it before, but man, that boom, stuff boom, boom. so yeah. good. Yeah, we recently just did Conan the Barbarian. There's a great scene. Where, like, I did actually watch that. Yeah. yeah, when Conan hits the guy with the axe, it just blood explodes. Yeah, it's so jet, good. As if he just had like a balloon. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, but yeah, this is like the infamous firefight where he's shooting all these actual Cubans. They're definitely not stuntmen painted brown. Now, look, no. I was watching. I was watching this on on VHS. Maybe the color was wrong, but they kind of looked like white guys painted brown. Well, how do they look on your? There's like two actual. I've said it two, maybe three actual Cubans in the movie. Yeah, the accents is usually what gives it away, but those weren't Cubans. Yeah, those were those were the guys that they had, those were the extras they had to use earlier in the background. Like, just come on, just put and it on. wasn't even like they got. Mm-hmm. 
other lit- Latinx people. Latinx, like, sure, yeah, Latinx, yeah. thank you. Yes, yes, I'm very progressive. It's not like they got other of those people. They just were like, yeah, just white guys, put some brown makeup on them. I guess they didn't have, they only had white stunt men available for them. Like, even the main one who's about to kill them, I'm like, I'm like, maybe that's just a Cuban guy wearing dark makeup to blend in with the night. But then the it's, other guys are wearing Hawaiian shirts, so I don't know well, how, that's how you know. That's how you know they're Cuban. <laughs> yeah, or not. Because that only that one guy dressed all in black. Everyone else is wearing like they, bright colors. Mi, mi, I like, I do like Hawaiian shirts, but Miss Nomer here. Yeah, Cubans guys don't really wear Hawaiian shirts. Yeah, they wear guayaberas and stuff like that. Yeah, but not Hawaiian shirts. And everyone, every everybody in this was well, it's tropical. I swear, there's no research they had. Tra- hey, hey, these white, hey, these white stunt guys, just you know, put some brown face on them or whatever. Hey, some Hawaiian shirts, and I don't know. Everyone, every once, every every once in a while, I have to say, take it easy. Take it and easy. That's how you know, and that's how you know. Uh, it's it's not as bad as uh, the Hispanic guys in the original Dawn of the Dead, which were 100 percent just white guys dude, and really bad. <laughs> dude, and I'm like, huh? I guess that passed back yeah. then. Or uh, what's his face? Uh, who's that famous actor? Oh my God, who's the from Planet of the Apes? Mark Wahlberg. No, oh, I thought you were talking about the Good Planet of the Apes. No, <laughs> Charlton Heston. Who actually is in that movie? Yeah. But Charlton has. By the way, we have an action figure of the Michael Clark Duncan eight behind you. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! Charlton Heston in uh, Touch of Evil. I think mm-hmm. they put they made him Mexican in that. It's like this movie's really good, but this is very distracting. Like you are not Mexican. Oh, well, they also. To be fair, they also made him. They also made him like Hebrew in Ten Commandments that's as true. well. <laughs> He's that's very what, versatile. That's one of my favorite parts in Ed Wood, where Ed Wood meets uh, Orson Welles. He's like, the studio wants me to make a picture with Charlton Heston as a Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> like, even he doesn't believe it. I once met a girl from Gordon Street. <laughs> best part of Wayne's World. So, uh, he's shooting everyone. He does the say hello to my little friend. Say hello to my little friend. He doesn't even care he's getting shot. And at that point, I think it was just Al Pacino being a bad actor. It's like, so Al, so when the squibs go up, pretend like you're getting shot. And he's just like, fuck it. Ah, yeah, I'm Al Pacino. Pacino. I'm bulletproof. Hey, just keep shooting me. And like the director's probably like, fuck that, it. That's the, that's the other thing. Like, I know that, that's another that's another one of those tropes where it's like, oh, if you're on a lot of drugs, bullets don't hurt you. I don't care what you're on. Yeah. If you're shot, you're going to fall down because you got shot. Yes. It's not this like superpower that gets... That part was, of course, silly, but yeah. it, it's not a superpower. If you get sh- one time with a rifle, you'd be dead, like yeah. at least on the ground. And I, I, we've all heard stories of the people taking mm. a while to go down. I've seen like video and stuff, but like that. Usually, it's just one person shooting. He's being shot by like ten people. An entire battalion with, like, of fake Cubans is shooting him. Guns. Yeah. <laughs> An entire battalion of fake Cubans are yeah. shooting him, and he's just like, I did a lot of cocaine. I'm fine. Yeah, I don't think that's how it goes. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the one hitman blows his back out with a shotgun. Yeah. He falls into his fountain, close up on the world is yours. Mm. And then this film is dedicated to Howard Hawks and Ben Hetch, who did the original Scarface. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, I was like, okay. Uh, Boris Karloff's in the original Scarface. I kind of, well, I'm never going to watch it because it's very offensive. That's actually the worst part of this. Of course. Yes. Because they're paying tribute to the people who made Italians look And evil, you can't do that. But you should never, never ever do, do that. Yeah. Anyway, um, he yeah, has so- a dart. It's true. You guys don't see the studio like I do. He has a dartboard with Scorsese's face <laughs> on it, like right here off camera. <laughs> Yeah, he really I've had doesn't enough like of Scar- it. I've had enough of you. I've had enough of Scorsese's shenanigans. And it's not for what you think. He didn't like that Rolling Stone thing he did. That's more of <laughs> his, his, his big beef. There's no mobsters in this. <laughs> so anyway, um, then he gets up uh, and he goes on another adventure, according to the video game, where he just lives, I guess. You didn't see the post credit scene because you forgot. The, oh, the, okay. the post credit scene. After that part, he gets up. Uh, he gets up and then Nick Fury's there and he asks him to join the Avengers Initiative. <laughs> Nick Fury. So this is 1983. Yeah. So I think Samuel Jackson, what, yeah. was he just in uh, Coming to America or is that a few years later? 83. <laughs> he was in. When when did Coming come? I forget. Yeah. But it, you know, he shows up and he goes, he wakes, uh, Tony Montana wakes up, he sees. Sam Lynch asks, are you, are you inviting me to the Avengers? He goes, no, I'm here to buy cocaine. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm in another Avengers movie. I need it. <laughs> I need it. And he's like, uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. doesn't pay well. I got to go rob the McDowell's in Coming to America. 
<laughs> I'm not getting royalties on that one episode of Agents of Shield I was on. Fucking, uh, I didn't see the new coming to America. I love. I won't watch it. I refuse because I, I love the original too much. I love the original, and I I was excited they were making a new one. Then mm. I saw the trailer, and I was like, Oh no! It looks really it bad. It looks really bad. Yeah. Well, now I I hope you saw that what happens when a Cuban is a bad guy and doesn't play by the rules and makes enemies. And I hope you turn yourself around and turn your life around. It worked for Pitbull. <laughs> I don't think Kodak's going to hire you to plug their digital camera you anytime think, you, soon. You think Walmart's going to give me a, a cushy gig? <laughs> I love when they hired him as their, that was like their last ditch efforts. Like you guys are so late to the digital market. Even Pitbull can't help you. <laughs> I saw Pitbull in concert recently, like a year ago. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. I went to go wa watch him at uh, in Tampa. And so, you know, you know, you don't realize about Pitbull is like, yeah. Pitbull has people like Pitbull has all these songs. I'm like, Pitbull has a couple of his own songs, but everyone knows Pitbull from being on other people's songs. Yeah. So the whole concert was just him doing his part. Yeah. Of of, of other people's songs. I'm like, all right, I guess. Uh, so Royce, thank you for coming. Oh, this is great, man. To a the, blast. To, to, to the, the video store. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, again, I'm, I'm I will be frisking you when you leave. I'm gonna make sure all the tapes are here because this movie was a bad it. influence. But I hope you turn your life around. I just don't want to tune into one of your streams one day and see you getting machine gunned. Uh, with a pile of cocaine. With a pile of cocaine. <laughs> I'm bulletproof. <laughs> it's like, oh no! I just scream, avenge me, Tony! <laughs> like, no, please leave me out of it. I go on the news and be like, I do not know uh, Mr. Lopez at all. I've never met him. <laughs> oh yeah, that's Tony from Hack the Movie. He's gonna be on 60 Minutes later too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm following you around in a car with a trigger. <laughs> Yes, Mr. Do, it in, do it in front of the studio. Yes, uh, Mr. Lopez, he said very, very offensive things. Yeah. I'm here to call him out on it. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, where can we find you, Royce? Uh, I don't know, on the internet. When YouTube's letting me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do Day Wave uh, yeah. on YouTube. I do Revenge of the Sis on YouTube. Stop, 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 stop. Uh, yeah. I do Day Wave on YouTube, <laughs> and that's it. I do no again, other again, show. Again, again, again. It's because of this movie. Letting you mm -hmm. think you can name your show that mean name. I apologize. Um, I do. You know what I do? Yeah. It's funny because with this show, people always go like, you know, normal people go, what do you do for a living? And I'm always like, oh, God, I have to explain this thing that we made as a joke five years ago. <laughs> so then I'm like, I always go, yeah, I do a show. What's it called? ROTC Media. Oh, they're like, oh, like the Marines. And thing. that all, <laughs> exactly, Tony, what they always do is they go, so it's like a show about the military. I go, no. Well, I want you to turn your life around. How about... Um, mm -hmm. Uh, Vengeance of the Virgins, maybe? I like that. Uh, I'm how about Virgin? I don't know if you know that. Incel though. Annihilators. Incel Annihilators. That's, That's a good <laughs> one. That's a good name. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> but anyway, check them out there mm -hmm. and uh, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And um, if you're a Latinx person who was led astray by this, I hope we turned your life mm -hmm. around. <laughs> Real quick, uh, just something is, is actually yeah. of something I'm, I, I yeah. really, really feel passionately about. It's, uh, it's, it's non for profit, but there are millions of women whose wombs are polluted. <laughs> and we're sitting here and we're letting it happen. All right. I've never heard that term until I know, this movie. Either. I've never heard your womb is polluted. What are you hiding toxic waste in it? <laughs> Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Call our voicemail line and uh, hit us up on Patreon. We got some good Patreon content. Uh, yeah, in our merch store and check all that out. You and can send a super thanks now, by the way, if you're watching this on replay. I did enable super thanks. Thank that's you. That's right. If you're watching this on replay because you can't watch it when it premieres, super thanks him. Yeah, just super thanks me. Please. Mm -hmm. Please. He needs to buy pounds of cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to go to Bolivia. And remember, um, don't watch the original Scarface. Uh, this is a cautionary tale, but the original Scarface is just an outright lie. Don't agree with it. Fake uh, news. It's fake. De that's what the no Royce. You're not allowed to say that either. God damn. The Department of Misinformation was made so to protect Tony from Italian stereotypes. <laughs> not many people know this. Don't let them lie to you. <laughs> Speaking of the original uh, Scarface, and we were talking about Leonardo DiCaprio and Scorsese. Watch the Aviator. There's a really great yes. There's a really great sequence where he has to justify the large breast in Scarface yes. to like a censor bureau. It's so a pretty good. great scene. But anyway, that is it from us. Adios. Bye.
We are waiting for the dark souls of fighting games. Let us have it. We're ready. <laughs> Soul Edge has nothing on a lightsaber. Like, I'm sorry. James Earl Jones comes back. No. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. I don't think kids trade games yeah. anymore. I need that sense of accomplishment, and it wasn't there. And I think that that was a major flaw. The way they engineer these is just phenomenal. As much as you're into, like, the comics, I was very into the toys, so I was on, like, the message board all yeah. the time. Yeah. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page.